here is your hostess, the lovely star of television's Bewitched, Elizabeth Montgomery! to be your hostess on the exciting Hollywood Palace, and I have the opportunity to thank all of you for watching Bewitched. It's a lot of fun playing Samantha each week and having the power to make all sorts of things appear, a bottle of champagne, a diamond bracelet, and even one thing that's almost impossible to get, a parking space. <laughs> but tonight I'm really going to have a ball. I'm going to make a whole variety show appear. It's not really very difficult. I'll show you how it's done. And here's our first act from Italy, the sensational Three Roberti. <laughs> I show you beautiful track.
<laughs> the three Robertis, weren't they marvelous? Someone's doing some painting. Mm-hmm. I see you're using super chem tone. Why's that? Well, I like it because the colors are nice and bright, and they're just different from every other one, you know? Mm-hmm. Goes on easily, doesn't it? Oh, yes. One coat covers everything? Hmm. If you wanted to put it over like pink over maroon, you might have to put two coats on, but an ordinary white wall would cover with one coat of paint. What do you think of Super Chem Tone? Well, it's not perfect, but pretty near perfect. Super Chem Tone Wall Paint, the easiest way to lovelier rooms. Made by Sherwin-Williams, the people who bring you high-quality paints for home and industry. Look for this Cover the Earth trademark. Now on with the show, and one of America's favorite comedians, who's currently appearing at the Aladdin in Las Vegas, Jackie Mason. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. It's a great thrill and a fantastic opportunity to see me in person again, ladies. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be with Elizabeth Montgomery on the same show. She's a fantastic personality. And it's not every day that a girl introduces me. I'm accustomed to men introducing me. I never saw a girl who actually uh, hosts her own show. Only last week, a man was introducing me. Didn't look like her at all. <laughs> Didn't even walk like her. Came out on the stage and said, good evening. <laughs> He didn't get on right about here. <laughs> I should make fun of Ed Sullivan. We're very good friends now. We always got along very well. Not on his show, but we got along. <laughs> These are the jokes, mister. <laughs> so far, you're looking at me like you're waiting for a comedian to show up. <laughs> Don't get nervous. I start slow. This is not my act yet. Next. <laughs> Trying to pick out the better side. I don't care if I do good or not. I found out that in this business, you don't do so hot, you run for office. <laughs> Especially in California. <laughs> George Murphy couldn't get a job as a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald Reagan couldn't get too many jobs lately in the movies. You notice it? <laughs> Running for governor. <laughs> Watch me. One bad show, I'm a president. <laughs> Now, this is the most fantastic thing. You could run for political office. Mister, listen to this. <laughs> you look to me like you're going to get very excited about this whole thing. You could run for political office without any qualification. Do you know that? Mister? <laughs> you know anything at all that I'm talking about? <laughs> In any other field, let's assume you want to become a doctor. You have to go to college. You know that to become a congressman, you don't have to go to college? Mister? <laughs> Don't you know anything by yourself? <laughs> to become a congressman, you don't have to go to college. A doctor, you do. Even a football player has to go to college. A congressman doesn't. That's why we have such great football players in this country and such bad congressmen. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I think I'll wait. I'll listen. <laughs> this is very interesting. Not to you, but it, it's very interesting to me how you, in, in political business, everybody is ashamed to admit that they're running. I don't know if you notice it. Let's assume a man wants to be president. The first thing he does is announce, hello, I'm not available. <laughs> he denies it and then he runs. This is the only business in the world where you deny it and run. I'm talking to you, mister. <laughs> Let's assume a man wants to be a plumber. Would he deny it? You ever see a plumber knock on the door and say, I don't want the job. Maybe you got it. <laughs> <laughs> but if a guy wants to be a president, he's ashamed. You know why he's ashamed? Because they know that deep in their hearts, they should be plumbers. <laughs> I don't want to... Thanks a lot. I don't want to pick on any individual. Well, take a look at a man like Governor Romney. He's running around the whole country just to deny that he's running for office. And he's stopping each person personally. Hello, I don't want the job. He even went on television last week just to deny it. They said to him, do you want to be a president? He said, me? I never would think of it. Me, a president? He said, of course, if the country calls, that's another story. <laughs> How does a guy know if the country calls? What do you do? You call up your office and say, hello, you got a call from the country? <laughs> I can't figure it out. Take a look at Nixon. Mister. <laughs> Next. <laughs> he knows what's happening with Richard Nixon. He's been running so long, he forgot what he's running for. 
Every time you look at him, he's running for something. He sees you running, he runs with you. He don't know for what. <laughs> and he, the more he runs, the more he denies it. He just made a statement last week. Me? He says, I am not running this time for the presidency. I made up my mind. I'm not running. I'm not even considering it. No matter what happens, I will not even accept it. And that's final. Then he said that if I'm elected. <laughs> Take a look at Bobby Kennedy. You see, he, I know, is an honest man. If he says he's not running, I believe him. Any man that'll climb a mountain in the middle of the night and announce from the top of the mountain, hello, I don't want the job. <laughs> With 5,000 people taking pictures. <laughs> I know he means it. That statement took two minutes to make. It took him six days to stay there. He was waiting for an answer. <laughs> That's the whole joke, mister. <laughs> Come here, you sit with this guy. <laughs> You roll the stiffs on one chair. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to bring out? I'm not saying this to make fun of Richard Nixon or, or, or anybody. I'd never make fun of the politicians of this country, especially a man like Nixon, who is dedicating his life to this country. Nobody works harder than Nixon. I don't know if you read that. He's the hottest candidate right now for the Republican Party. Did you read about it? He got there from losing elections. <laughs> the more he loses, the bigger he gets. <laughs> When he, fought, when he ran for the presidency and he lost, they said he was finished. But when he ran for the governorship of California and he lost, they say, ha-ha, that's the man. <laughs> I'll explain the whole thing to you. You're lucky I'm not busy. <laughs> you see, the reason the Republicans want him is they figure if a winner loses, it's embarrassing. But if he loses, they'll say, so what? We expect it. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> You know, you, I'm going to tell you the truth, I, I don't even appreciate this kind of material because I can't stand people who make fun of the, of the politicians of this country. They work harder than anybody in America and they sacrifice themselves for this country. They're dedicated to this country. What right does anybody have to make fun of the political leaders of our nation? Get out! <laughs> That's right. You know what problems they have to solve all over the world? Just the threat of population. The overpopulation problem in America today is fantastic. Do you know that right now, Mr... Oh, I think they're telling me I'm finished. I'm not going to start another issue. I'd better go home. Last time I went like this, they went like that. It was all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have to leave. I do have another show anyway in January. <laughs> and even that one is indefinite. Incidentally, if any of you would like to see me on the Milton Boyle show next month, write to him. Tell him about it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hollywood Palace now proudly welcomes the noted Shakespearean actor, Mr. Paul Lynn, whose readings from the works of the immortal bard have been thrilling audiences all over the United States. Tonight, Mr. Lynn will be joined by Miss Elizabeth Montgomery in a reading, The Dagger Scene from Macbeth. Scene one, act two, Macbeth, by William Shakespeare. <laughs> Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. 
Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? <laughs> I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses. <laughs> Or else worth all the rest. I see thee still in all my blade and dudge and gouts of blood which was not so before. There is no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Thou sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabouts, and take the present horror that from the time which now suits with it. Else I threat he lives. Words such as the heat of deeds to cold breath gives. I go and it is done. The bell invites me. The bell invites me. <laughs> Hear it not, Duncan. For it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? <laughs> what page you on? <laughs> Seventy-eight. I heard the owl cry and the cricket scream. Did you not speak? When? Now. As I descended? I Ark, who lies in the second chamber? Double vein. This is a sorry sight. <laughs> Foolish thought to say a sorry sight. Go, get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? Go, carry them and spare the sleepy groom. <laughs> I'll go no more. Look on it again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose, give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are as but pictures. I'll gild the sleeping faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. <coughs> <coughs> Whence is that knocking? Uh, How was it with me when every noise appalls me? Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. A little water fears us of this deed. Hark! More knocking! Get on your nightgown! Get on your nightgown? <laughs> Get on your nightgown, lest occasion call a show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To, to know my deed, for best, best not know. <laughs> Sorry, darling. <laughs> To know my deed, to a best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. We will now do scene two, act five, from Othello. Those of you familiar with Othello, remember this is the scene in which Othello strangles Desdemona. I, I don't recall rehearsing that scene. We'll fake it. Miss Montgomery will be right back with Vic Damone, Jackie Mason, myself, the sensational Parker, 
and lots more right after this word from your sponsors. Thanks. Of the 35 million denture wearers in the country, many enjoy freedom from embarrassing denture stains and odor. Reason? Denture cream. Because it's used outside the mouth, denture cream can contain more powerful ingredients than family toothpastes. Denture cream cleans away embarrassing stains and odor as no family toothpaste can. Get denture cream. Keeps dentures clean to give you freedom from denture embarrassment. The heartbreak of psoriasis. What does psoriasis look like? It may first appear as a crusty patch on skin or scalp. Can it get worse? Yes, and it can leave skin rough and scaly. Can anything relieve the itching and scaling? Yes, new Tegrin. It's guaranteed, or your money back. Guaranteed to speed relief from itching, work fast to remove scales, and continued use helps keep scales from coming back. Try Tegrin. It's guaranteed. And now, the sound of music, Mr. Vic Damone. I cried for you. Now it's your turn to cry over me. Every road has a turn That's one thing
Thank you, Elizabeth. You know, I never miss a show. Oh. Never miss it. You made noses popular in show business for the first time. Oh, Vic. First Didn't you time. ever hear of Jimmy Durante or Bob Hope? <laughs> Every week on television, I'm a fool about your charms. Since I saw you, I envision you here in my arms. Compliments like that are charming. Whoa. And real and fine and rich But my looks are not disarming You're hooked by my twitch <laughs> I'm wild again, beguiled again A simpering, whimpering child again Bewitched, bothered and bewildered Are you? That you couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep And wouldn't sleep Wouldn't sleep When I came and told you You shouldn't sleep Shouldn't sleep Bewitched, bothered and bewildered Am I? I'm in your power But what of it? He is lost I can tell It's a bewitching spell But here's the thing -ba -ba -ba. Each spell I bring -ba 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 -ba. Just comes back at me When I hear you sing Bewitched, bothered and bewildered Reciprocal magic is not very tragic When I Paul Lind. Vic? Vic? <laughs> Say, I heard rather a good joke at the club the other day. <laughs> did you really? Yes, I did. Would you like to tell it to me? No, just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> George, I want a divorce. <laughs> I'd rather not. It's fun staying with you each night. <laughs> what would you do if I told you I'd met someone funnier than you? Someone more humorous, you say? Just how long have you two been having laughs? Met him in Sussex on a rainy night. We walked for hours. Did you get wet? <laughs> oh, play the game, George. 
<laughs> of course we got wet. The divorce, George, may I have it? No, having too much fun. <laughs> oh, I say, you are a stick. And do you think you're not a stick? <laughs> no divorce. Harrington here. Who there? <laughs> oh, Colonel Boswell. Well, well, yes. Yes, that's serious if it goes off. Those H-bombs can be nasty. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, I haven't lost the touch. Still the best demolition man in England. Want me to take a look at it? Well, well that's just around the corner. Yes, sir. Immediately. You heard, Harriet? Yes. Goodbye, then. I'll be back shortly. You heard? <laughs> yes. Sounds like an impossible situation. Nothing is impossible. Yes, but what are we to do? Come with me to Sussex. That wouldn't be cricket. The heck with cricket. <laughs> Any man who would say that would strike the queen. <laughs> Forgive me, Harriet, it was a passion-driven remark. But do come with me to Sussex. I could only do that if I were free of George. Then could you? Yes. is right. This dandruff, I should get a white leotard. What you ought to get is head and shoulders. Ugh. Dandruff shampoos. Head and shoulders really works. Nice and sudsy. Now if it just does some good. It was good. They did it melt away beautifully. So did head and shoulders. Huh? On my dandruff. No more of those dancing snowflakes. Oh. And my hair's nicer now. Are we applauding the shampoo or the kids? Both, silly. No. Head and shoulders. Helps control dandruff with just regular use. It really works. I've had a perfectly wonderful time this evening. Thanks to Vic Damone, Paul Lind, Jackie Mason, and all the fine entertainers on the show. It's been a lovely change of pace for me being involved in another kind of magic, the magic of the Hollywood Palace. Next week, your host will be Batman, Adam West. Good night. has been brought to you by Head and Shoulders Shampoo, Cream and New Liquid. Helps control dandruff with just regular use. It really works. And by the American Tobacco Company, makers of Territon, the charcoal chip cigarette with a taste worth fighting for. This is Dick Tufel speaking. Don't forget next week at the Hollywood Palace, George Carlin, Ray Charles, Joey Heatherton, Landon's Midgets, Fred Robay, 
Floyd Rogers and Day 11, Danny Saylor, and your host, Adam West.